Hello, this is Mickey again with uh, video number three today. What I'd like to talk about is how to view your process, how to view the process you're going to do to be transformed. Many times we begin this journey looking for quick fixes or silver bullets or a book I can read, a tape I can watch, uh, a retreat I can go to, etc., and get fixed. And that doesn't exist. There is no tape, there is no book that you can read that will fix you, that will make it all better. And so the right way to look at it is really as a lifelong process and a process of, of transformation. And this way of looking at things is actually very common in our culture today. For example, with football, Nick Saban, the Alabama football coach, it talks about process. If you get the process right, the outcomes take care of themselves. And obviously for him, he's had a lot of success with that approach. In business, you have Jim Collins, an author who wrote Built to Last and Good to Great, two very uh, successful books about business, and they all talk about process. In uh, life, you have Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Again, all about process. And then, of course, the, the best process of all time, the discipleship that Jesus modeled with his 12 disciples and calls all of us who follow him to, to follow his example. And so again, this is a very common way of looking at things and definitely the way you want to look at your recovery and your healing and your path to a different kind of person. The bottom line for most of us is that how we got here wasn't just a few bad choices. It wasn't just something that we fell into. It's really many times just the tip of the iceberg and, and so we need to really look at ourselves, peel back the onion, and really see what we need to work on. What are the, what are the triggers? What are the root causes? And look for uh, processes and, and different routines we can develop that is really a lifelong process that will really transform us into a different kind of person. This, this isn't something that can be a year or two years. It's really a lifelong process. And again, there are no quick fixes. There are no silver bullets. You know, all of the books are good. The, the, the weekend retreats are good. There are a lot of good podcasts you can listen to, but in and of themselves, they're not, they're not going to get the job done. What we want to do is set up a, a process initially. But that can include therapy. That can include, if you have addiction issues, recovery. That can include small groups. There are a lot of different ways you can, you can uh, begin to develop a process and routines that you build into your life that will help you over time as you work on those processes and you, and you lean into them that will transform you into a different kind of person. If you're an addict and so you're looking for recovery, that's a 12-step program. And so that includes going to meetings, 12-step meetings. I mean, nowadays they have meetings on Zoom. You can join a meeting anywhere in the country, getting a sponsor, working the steps, Connecting with other men or women in recovery. That way you can check in your emotions, check in your triggers, vent, get support and encouragement from others that are on the same journey that you're on, which is really important. You want to do therapy with a qualified therapist is another critical element. And then eventually, once you hit step 12, you want to give back and, and sponsor others. Or through a fair recovery, you can become a mentor couple. And that's another way, great way to give back. Additional ideas that you want to be thinking about in terms of what else can I build into my, my program, into my process. Always you want to have the basics, the self-care, right? You want to take care of yourself. You want to get enough sleep, have a healthy diet, any, take any prescribed medications for depression or anxiety, and good hygiene. You know, take care of yourself. You want to exercise, whatever that looks like for you, anything from taking a walk, doing aerobics, lifting weights, Yoga is another great, great exercise. So yeah, really, so you feel better physically. The connection with, with others is really important a part of the process to be able to talk things out, check in feelings, check in triggers. That can be recovery groups, small groups, therapy groups, meeting with friends, meeting with your pastor. A lot of connection is always very healthy. You do want to read books. You want to listen to podcasts. You want to learn. You want to get new information that you can use and, and incorporate into your, into your program. Of course, if you believe in prayer and meditation, for, for those of us that have ADD, slowing our minds down so we can think, we can process, 
healthy, active participation in your local church is also something you can, you can incorporate into your program. Additional coaching in specific areas that, that you may need. For me, many times God speaks to me through movies or music, so you want to incorporate those things into your maybe your morning routine, listening to certain songs that are encouraging, that give you hope, so you get the day started in a, in a, positive, uh, in a positive way. Everybody's process is going to look different, but one thing I would say is it's really important to involve other people in the process, therapists, uh, other people in recovery, uh, small groups, etc. because if it's all about you and your willpower, I would say it's not sustainable. You're not going to, you're not going to make it on your own. And so you really want to try to include other people. I think God speaks to us many times through other people in recovery, in small groups. And so you want as much of that as you can within reason so that you have other people to encourage you, to hold you accountable, to support you, to pray for you. There are absolutely no lone rangers to be successful on this journey. You cannot do it alone. Everybody's process is going to look a little bit different. Some of you may be more musically inclined or, or might want to read more books or listen to podcasts, depending on how you learn. The ways you exercise are going to be different. There is no cookie cutter or no, no template here. It's learning about yourself. As you, as you get that information, you want to adjust your program to fit you, tailor-made to you and what encourages you, what fills your cup, so that you set yourself up for success every day, day by day. You want to keep building that program, building that process, and, and being successful. And it's sort of a self-fulfilling positive uh, uh, you say circle that, that you create. And so as you do this and you experience the benefits of this and you see the blessings in your interactions with your wife, with your kids, in your community, that just feeds back into it. You want more of it. You want to do it more. You want to, you want to be more active, lean into it. And really, probably the best quote I've ever heard on this and on how to look at this was by Laird Hamilton, the uh, big wave surfer from Hawaii. He has to train every day to be ready for the big waves when they show up, and you never know when or where they're going to show up. And so that you have to train with, without the uncertainty of, of when you're going to be able to, to ride a big wave. And the question to him was, how can, you, how can you continue to train? And it's not just physical, it's emotional training, uh, intellectual, spiritual, mental training. That's a lot of work you have to do, and you're not sure if you're going to ride a big wave tomorrow or a year from now. His response was actually, I love my training and who I do it with as much or more then I love riding big waves. In my case, I, I love my program. I love the people I interact with. These are friends of mine. These are brothers and sisters that I interact with. And so it's, I really can say today, it's taken me a while to get there, that I truly love what I do to stay sober and to live uh, as a better version of myself. And I love who I do it with. So again, that's probably the goal is to get to that place and really uh, hang in there, and so you will get there. So in conclusion, there is hope. You can be a different, a better person where life works. Life is good. You are well. Hang in there. Don't give up. It's worth it. Trust me. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.